here at the Walnut Creek National Monument. We came yesterday, but it was a little rainy and we couldn't go down. It's a hiking trail down to where the Sinagua Indians lived around 1100, 1200, and they lived in some cliff dwellings. It's not the Grand Canyon. It's a much more manageable canyon. It's a national park here in Flagstaff. Here on the shady side of the canyon, we have Douglas firs, ponderosa pine, and pinion pine. The pinion pine, of course, give us pine nuts, and Sinagua Indians ate those aplenty, just like I do. The other side is the sunny side. There's different sorts of plant life over there, like yucca. It says here that this was the perfect shelter for each room tucked into this rock alcove. It was built by nature, and it was the women of the Sinagua Indians that made it more habitable. Spanish explorers named the people living here Sinagua, which means without water, because of their ability to live and farm with very minimal amount of rainfall. Walnut Canyon is a dry canyon most of the time. where you see little blackness on the wall is where they had fires. And here you see where once had been a connecting door between two dwellings that at some point was sealed off. We'll never know why, but of course there's very little erosion happening down here way under the roof. So if you get up close you can see where the woman plastered the rocks together. You can see their finger, their finger marks there. Standing here on the sunny side of the canyon, we see where we need to end up. Ranger Station over there. We started, and we're lucky, because we have stairs, and the Sinagua Indians did not. Down here we see some of that prickly pear cactus, which can only thrive on the sunny side of the canyon. I gotta say, been to the Grand Canyon, of course. We went to the South Rim and it was beautiful and majestic and crowded and full of people. The Bright Angel Trail was packed. Coming here, and this is a holiday weekend, I can say we've seen four other groups of two besides us the whole time and one park ranger. It's wonderful. You can really get a sense of times past when it's a more isolated destination. These cliff dwellings were built around 1110, 1150, and inhabited for around 100 years. At an estimated 1250 AD, the Sinagua Indians moved just a few miles south of here to Anderson Mesa and became integrated into the Hopi tribe. No one's really sure why, but they left for us beautiful, historic, and ancient cliff dwellings, which we can now travel through and respect ourselves. <laughs>